Hi everyone. Today's video is going to be about um, teals. And by that, um, I mean a color that is a lighter version of the turquoise. So typically would be this type of a color. Okay, I want to talk about core, which I just showed you. Then I have um, one by Schmincke, which I'll just show you quickly. So it's right here and it's got a little bit of um, another watercolor on top so I'll have to clean it off before I show you. Here's a swatch card so that's a cobbled tu turquoise and um, I also will mention two watercolors that I don't have but um, I don't own in, in tubes but I do have them on a swatch card and these are these two so there's a cobble teal blue and there is a SB turquoise genuine yeah so those two colors I will swatch as well I don't know how well the swatches will go just because um, some of these are hard to lift especially if there is also very little of it there but we'll try and then I will also what else do I have I have also two miscellaneous items and so this is the um, Prima the classic watercolor palette and that's mainly uh, a student grade um, watercolor so they aren't that great for um, you know if you want to do something that is worthy of framing but having said that they're great for journaling and um, just having a bit of fun really and the final one is the dr ph martins and this is their radiant concentrated watercolor this is a um, non-light fast watercolors so this is uh, turquoise blue okay so let's go ahead and first of all just start by swatching them and then we'll uh, look at the properties so I'll start with the um, core and this color is called cobalt teal they seem to be all um, cobalts and so that means they can be granulating and have that bit of a texture so I'll make sure I will show the full intensity first. It's a really beautiful color. I love this teal. I think it's probably my favorite one. So let's start. The watercolor paper I'm using today is a paper that I haven't used before. But it looks like... It should be okay because it has that bit of a texture that I like. This is the Windsor & Newton 300 GSM hot pressed paper. So it's got a bit of a texture. So you can see the granulation immediately. Granulation I'll just show to you up close. There we go. Um, I have cleaned out my palette here just because I want to do a rainbow and I had all over sort of colors in different areas and that was really bugging me so I decided to wipe it and start fresh so here is a nice I love Schmincke how it rewets just so beautifully and creamy so I'm just adding a little bit of water and making sure it's really concentrated quite creamy by the way um, Schmincke has informed me that from this year Those sharp corners, the unrolled corners of the palettes, the tin palettes, um, they um, are planning to uh, change that. The, the sharp edges shouldn't be there anymore, basically, which is great because that's something that we all. Um, had a bit of a complaint about so you can see that this one that the the first one is slightly more greener 
Now let's look at the Daniel Smith. So first of all, I'm going to um, swatch this one, Cobalt Teal Blue. A very little color here. So it might be a very weak swatch, which is quite annoying. But I'll try to get as much pigment as I can. Yes, it's quite weak. So it might be a lot stronger when you're using it straight from the tube, obviously. But let's look at it anyway. I'm going to try and lift a little bit more. That's probably as much as I can get. Okay, and now let's try this one at the bottom, which shouldn't really be here because um, it's more of a greyish tone. But I thought some of you might be interested, so let's include this. So this is a genuine um, color, which means it is um, created from a real rock that they grind up and obviously add the binders and things that you need to create watercolor um, and they create these genuine colors so they're more expensive and they behave very different um, so they can separate they can granulate um, some of them have shimmer this one doesn't so it's quite interesting to work with, with those watercolors. It's a very pretty color, in fact. A bit more of a muted and a gray toned teal, I'd say. And finally, let's move on to the last two. So it's going to be this student grade. So it's uh, more blue than the others. The video cut out, um, but so I'm not sure at which point, but I'll basically was, um, I was telling you that depending on the paper, this watercolor that I just watched looks different and more of a teal, as you can see here, than, um, you know, on other papers. So on this paper it looks more blue Okay, so let's do the final one and I'm going to use the palette from the um, classics and I'm just going to drop a drop. You really need the tiniest amount of the radiant concentrated watercolor just because it's super, super um, concentrated. <laughs> So I'm going to pull out some of this color and go in about here. As you can see, super bright. And then I'm going to try and water it out, but also um, they're quite staining. So you need to work really quickly. And you'll see, even though I'm pulling out the color right here, it will push further. I'm actually a little bit just to have a middle ground as well. I'll stop probably around here and then a bit more water. Don't want to mess up my swatch. So as you can see it's the, the um, most vibrant out of them. Okay so now let me just go and title and also write down all the properties and then we'll discuss that. Uh, I have written down all the information which we're going to go through and also I thought um, I'll do my own transparency and staining um, test as well because the the brands usually give the information and sometimes it's not exactly what, what they say, so I think it's easier rather than writing down and comparing. I think it's easier just to see ourselves. By the way, if you hear any noise, um, Mason has been woken up. 
uh, after a very short nap so i'll have to finish up with him in the room so let's um, look at the core first so it's a cobalt teal and um, it's basically let me just zoom in for you so you can see better so it's a series four and it's um, so it's quite expensive and the light fast is excellent so it's great for that and it's a pj50 as a matter of fact all of these three are pj50 so then we have the schminke hordam it's um cobalt turquoise and um theirs is also series four which was interesting for me to find out i didn't know that and um, light fastness as well is um, extremely. I believe that uh, these three watercolors are not ASTM um, rated, but this one is. So all of these um, light fast um, grading, all of these light fast information that we have here is um, from the brand's own testing um and so it's the same pigment as is the next one so here is daniel smith this color is called cobalt teal blue and it's a series two um again light fastness excellent um and now let's have a look at the uh, next one which is daniel smith as well it's sb stands for sleeping beauty as i just um researched so it's a sleeping beauty turquoise genuine and as you can see the series is five so it goes up it's from their primatech uh, primatech line which is uh stands for the genuine um pigments so um the light fast is excellent but of course we don't have uh, a pigment info because when it's a genuine pigment it won't have the synthetic uh, pigment name for it. So this one is ASTM tested. So then we have the the two kind of extra um, colors over here. Let me just push this like that. And these two are, um, like I said, miscellaneous because this is a student grade, which I thought would be great to include for those of you who uh, perhaps are interested to have uh, a cheaper kind of watercolor or a watercolor that uh, you use in, in art journals or something like that and um, I don't have the information for Prima so this is their confections um, and it's the classics um, palette the name uh, the color doesn't have a name it's uh, it's a zero seven um, and also I don't have any other information on light fast or um, pigment etc so that's what it is but it's a very close match um, to the others perhaps a little bit too blue um, on this paper and then finally we have the Dr. PH Martin's radiant concentrated turquoise blue um, or it's also known as 8A so if you look up 8a you will um, get this color so one thing like i said before it's a non-light fast um, watercolor all of the radiant concentrated watercolors are non-light fast so keep that in mind um, and i don't have any other information in terms of the uh, pigments um, but as you can see it's the brightest and it it is also the most staining out of all of them um we will do the staining test just in a minute but before we do that i wanted you to see the granulation um on all of them so let's have a look at core first so it's nicely granulated um, core gives these beautiful color separations when mixed with other watercolors um, it also, um, then also looking at Schminke Horodam right here, not, it doesn't come across as strongly granulated as the others, but it is definitely granulated nonetheless. Um, Daniel Smith Cobble Teal Blue, strongly granulated. As you can see, you literally can see these little 
spots of pigment, little dots of them. And then Daniel Smith um, Sleeping Beauty Turquoise Genuine. Surprisingly, it's actually um, less granulating. It's not wanting. Here we go. It's less granulating than the. Um, Cobalt Teal Blue, and then we have Prima Confections, which is not granulating actually at all, so I can't see much going on there. And then um, the Dr. PH Martin's Radiant Turquoise Blue is uh, basically that there is zero granulation because it's the most transparent color you can get. They are known for their radiance and transparency, so no matter how much, as you can see here. Um, how much you pack on it will always be transparent so now let's look at the um, transparency along with the um, staining which I will do in a second so in terms of transparency none of them except for the last one um, are really transparent and that is to be expected from a um, cobalt uh, watercolor anyhow um, so I was surprised to see that the student grade um, Prima Confections actually did quite well. I was thinking that it would uh, be pretty opaque because that's what um, student grade watercolors tend to be. But no, it did quite well. So that's good to know. Um, then obviously these three being cobalt by these three, I mean the first three. Korsh, Minka and Daniel Smith, they different levels of um, opacity. So I wouldn't say that they are opaque, but they are definitely ranging from semi-opaque to semi-transparent. Um, so the least opaque color uh, or the most transparent out of the three, I'd say, is the Daniel Smith Cobalt Teal Blue, but... Um, it's a very weak swatch as you can see because I didn't have much of the color left. I basically used up everything I had and that's all I could get. So if I would have this color from a tube I would assume it, be, it would be a little bit more um, opaque. And these two are I'd say semi-opaque probably. Um, or semi-transparent I mean it's up to you to decide as you know you you're seeing it yourself with your own eyes and then finally we have this one which is the Mason the sleeping turquoise genuine so that is doing okay but it's not obviously transparent you can see that and the next thing I want to do is just um, show you the um, color disperse. So I'm going. So this is the um, core, and I'm just going to uh, wet a an area right here to see how the color moves, and I'm making sure it's nice and wet. And now I'm just going to go in and get quite a bit of this color. And now I'm just going to go in and put a few dots here and there. So the next one is Schminke Horada. So that's Schminke. Don't know what to do about the Daniel Smith because I don't have any pigment left. Yeah. So that's all I have uh, left here. and it might affect the um, color disperse because there isn't much pigment so I'm just going to do as much as I can all right so I just did the whole thing off camera basically anyway so it seems to be a little bit uh, less of a color dispersed than the others and that could be because it's a genuine color okay sorry about that I'm just um, trying to multitask doing this video okay so let's do the, the last one um, it seems that um, this one didn't do much movement or didn't do flow as beautifully and I think that's also to be expected from a student grade they just behave differently so I've got this beautiful color 
uh, from the from the Dr. PH Martins and I'm very curious to see how they do because I haven't tested them wet and wet and oh that's beautiful they're like um, mm, that's gorgeous it's like a really strong dye and beautiful that's that and I actually forgot to do the staining test <laughs> Okay, well, this video is going all over the place, so please be patient. Okay, so I'm going to do the staining test, and I'm going to try and lift. So what I'm doing is I'm just wetting my brush, and I'm going to have it wet enough, but I'm drying it on a piece of uh, tissue, and then I'm just going to do these sort of movements as if I'm trying to lift the watercolour and all I can see is that rather than lifting it it just moves it to this area because you can see where it's lighter I mean it's moving it's lifting some of the watercolour to be fair um, but it's also moving some of it down below and then let's look at the Schminke next. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing and just move it and wash my brush in between and move it like so. Um, so the Schminke lifts better than the uh, core let's look at the next one which is daniel smith i mean like i said it's a weak swatch anyway so hopefully it should lift quite well as well yeah i mean we're almost getting a white paper so whether that's because the swatch was the weakest out of all of them um unfortunately i can't say for sure or whether it's just um the color itself now let's look at the genuine is lifting but not as well but you can lift some of it definitely i'd say so far probably core is the the um, most staining out of all of them and now let's look at the student grade prima confections and it does seem to be moving. It's not little. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'll put the TV on as soon as we start uh, stop filming. Is that okay, Mason? All right. And then this one I expect to not uh, budge at all because they tend to be quite staining. But actually... Look at that, I was able to move some and, uh, but you can see the the dye basically or the, the pigment gets pushed so strongly down that you basically end up uh, getting a darker color on your lighter area, which you can see here it doesn't happen, it's the same all through. So here is an overview. I also want to show you um, mixing these colors with other watercolors. Okay, so I was the last thing I was going to do just um, using this part of the paper is mixing these pigments with another pigment, um, maybe yellow or something like that, or quinacridone gold, and see how they behave because um, this the the core I know. So yeah. Uh, God, it's, um, so I'm trying to wrap up this video and it's becoming very challenging with Mason. So um, this um, core, it um, separates into very beautiful um, two pigments and basically um, I want to see whether the other watercolors are doing the same thing or not. And that I will have to do tomorrow, I hope, um, in a part two. So... I will edit this and you'll be able to see this video today and then hopefully part two should be tomorrow and yeah so thanks for watching I hope you found this informative and it gave you a better idea 
um, of how these watercolors are, are working and which ones you prefer. Um, I think there's a beautiful range here from more kind of muted and lighter colors to more brighter, greener, bluer, etc. So um, thanks for watching and see you soon. And uh, Mason says bye-bye as well. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye.